Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's day is January 31st, 2019. The time is 3.24 p.m. 15.24, for those of you folks. We have quite a lot to talk about today. A lot happened this week. Uh, not a lot happened last week, or the week before. Let little things happen, you know? It's like, oh, okay, well, not really newsworthy stuff. Uh, the only thing that happened that was kind of newsworthy was the Blizzard Google deal, but we'll talk about that in this segment that we're going to be covering today. Uh, this week, probably what could have been the biggest news if Warcraft 3 didn't release was that Dean Takahashi played Doom Eternal and showed us once again that he is not entirely good at video games. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you, I kind of feel bad, and here's why. Because when I, well not really feel bad for him, but when I watched this video on stream the other day, I didn't quite pick up exactly what he was supposed to do because I skipped the opening cinematic that you're gonna watch right here. Now this is 10 minutes of gameplay that's been uploaded to a secondary channel for archival purposes. Right here it shows an enemy fall, jumping up the top of the thing and the platform falling. I didn't see that when I was flipping around, so I didn't know that that was a key thing that was highlighted. But Dean saw it while he was playing, so surely he should have picked up that that was something that he was supposed to interact with. Throughout this entire 10, for basically, it'll be just one minute, one minute, 38 seconds, he enters this room. Did he see it though? I mean, he might, maybe he was distracted. Maybe he was distracted and he missed it. I don't know, but it's not a good look. Why did they put the video out? I have no idea. But if we go forward here, we could see some seven minutes, 53 seconds, eight minutes, 20 seconds. This is the point where I believe he actually jumps over it. There's the platform right there. I think right here he decides to turn left. No, he's gonna check the map for the 15th time. This is seriously everybody is watching. Get, 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 just, get, just go to the thing. Go jump off the thing. There it is. Just go. They showed you in the cutscene. Just jump on the thing. You see, you see how hard it is to watch this stuff? Just go fucking jump. <laughs> it's, so, it's so hard <laughs> to watch this stuff. And so let me see a couple minutes later. He sees, is he still figuring it out? Nope. He's still looking around. Doesn't know where to go. Uh, I believe right about here. I mean, it's, here it is. So now he's on it. And then, oh, oh, no. I don't know. I don't know when he does it, but it's a 10 minute video and, uh, and well, <laughs> just didn't quite nail it. So that would have been the biggest news this week if it wasn't for the fact that Warcraft 3 Reforged launched <laughs> to so much praise, so much praise. Uh, yes, in the 10 minutes video that was deleted, that's right, Venture Beat didn't de in fact delete that video, but the internet is forever. Warcraft 3 launches, Metacritic has it sitting at, oh, where's my button here? Metacritic scored 92. User scored 9.1. Great reviews all the way around. Everybody really, oh, that's Reign of Chaos. That's the wrong game. Oh shit, okay, hold on a second. That's the original, totally mixed them up. Let's go, hold on a second. Oh, here it is. Reforge. Oh, 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 this is the one that we want. Oh! <laughs> what is that score? Oh my god. Point eight. Point eight score. <sighs> this is the... <laughs> the I w did I save the link for that? I did not. This is the second worst scored game the second lowest scored game on uh on metacritic right now it's so close i know it's so close to 0.75 isn't it follow 76 technically better uh the number one most disliked game the lowest scored game on metacritic it's actually uh day one gary's incident and do you guys remember that that game it was like a survival game that came out several years ago. Uh, Total Biscuit made a video on it and pointed out all the things that was like that were like really, really bad. It was just a fucking shit show. Then Wild Game Studio took down the uh, the video, and TB made a follow up 
Uh, and it turned into a huge controversy. I want to say it was probably 2013 or something like that. That was a long time ago, 2012. Uh, it was a huge controversy. I, I, I'm fairly certain we talked about it on like Twimo or something like that, or one of the, one of the Game Breaker shows probably. Um, but it was, it was, it, it was the lowest scored, uh, on Metacritic and it took an army of people basically motivated by a single person by Total Biscuit. Uh, to do it. And that was a huge thing, right? The steps that they had taken, they were taking down videos that were saying negative things about their game, and it was a huge thing. Warcraft 3 Reforged, made by the beloved Blizzard, gets the second lowest score purely because of the game's release. Not even necessarily because of the actions that Blizzard took after release by, you know, shushing anybody that maybe talks negative about it or anything like that purely because of the game itself <sighs> so at a point eight it actually puts it i believe is the lowest scoring game uh well it's definitely the lowest scoring game in blizzards uh uh in, in blizzards uh, catalog uh it's still war three though right how can it be that bad well let's talk about that <laughs> i'm glad you asked so the game was announced uh, in 2018 BlizzCon, right? Had the trailer and everything. We're going to show that trailer in a little bit. Uh, but I want to start off with the video here that you may have seen making the rounds. And this video shows a side-by-side -side of, and I'll mute it here. It shows a side-by-side -side of the uh, 2018 trailer and the 2020 full release. Uh, the they're not sorry, not trailer, the 2018 gameplay. Okay, I shouldn't say don't not trailer, gameplay, uh, versus the actual release. And you could see that the cinematics, this is for the culling, right? The culling of strat uh sequence from Warcraft 3. The uh, you could see that the actual cinematics are completely, completely different. What was promised was what you see on the left. Uh, spoilers! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, on the right is, uh, it's basically exactly what it looked like in, uh, the original Warcraft 3, uh, uh, Rain of Chaos, uh, Frozen Throne. Um, and so, uh, see, pr crappy buggy games still get, like, a 5, so a good game that's buggy? Hmm. Well, uh, it's, it's all about, like, what was promised versus what was delivered. And as of today... We've not really received, we have not received any official communication from Blizzard in terms of like what they plan on doing with this or whatever. But there are a couple things that, I mean, there's basically a laundry list here. There is a laundry list here. So you could already see, just, I don't need to show you any more of this. It's only two minutes long, but you could see already that all the cinematics have been scrapped from this project. Just, just not part of the game anymore. Um, as was promised in the trailer, and I'll show you the trailer in a little bit, and we'll, we'll, we'll see that. Um, so let's start with, yeah, and it's still a 30 gigabyte game. Let's start with the, hmm. Let's start with the custom games. Because custom games in, in Warcraft 3 were such a huge deal that they actually spawned an entire new genre, a new multi-billion dollar genre of games the MOBA uh as well as of course like so many other uh games that have done uh pretty well for themselves as standalone uh titles um yeah multiple exactly like there's like Warcraft 3 can be credited for so many standalone titles and even genres it's insane like just what Warcraft 3 has done now Blizzard has seen that as well we don't want to miss out on this opportunity to make some money in the future should one of our custom games end up, you know, be becoming their own title. And so they have said that in their, this is in their uh, accept use policy, it says custom games are and shall remain the sole and exclusive property of Blizzard. Uh, without limiting the, or the, the foregoing, you hereby assign to Blizzard all of your rights, title, and interests in, in and to all custom games, including but not limited to any copyrights in the content of any custom games. Uh, if for any reason you are prevented or restricted from assigning any rights in the custom games to Blizzard, like, for example, per like any local laws or anything like that, uh, it says uh, you grant Blizzard an exclusive, perpetual, worldwide, unconditional, royalty-free, irre irrevocable license enabling Blizzard to fully exploit the custom games or any component there of for any purpose and in any manner whatsoever so basically they're saying that 
any future and any current custom games. Now, as we've talked about before with the launch of Warcraft 3, or sorry, the announcement of Warcraft 3 uh, uh, Reforged, the older maps will work for the uh, uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged. And so, basically, they have taken control and ownership of everything that's ever been made for this. Uh, yeah, way to kill any interest in custom games. That is that is effectively what they're doing. They they look at it as, we want a CYA, so that way we don't lose out on an opportunity to make a shitload of money on a genre that is just massive. I mean, look what happened. Dota got huge. League of Legends got huge. Heroes of the Storm, basically dead. Um, and so they don't want that to happen again. I don't know if you guys remember, there was like a huge like back and forth between Blizzard and all kinds of things. And this actually happened with uh, KESPA, the Korean Esports Association, where they took uh, Brood War, uh, and I'm kind of going off memory here, but uh, they took Brood War and turned it into like a full-fledged esport and with like promotions and TV and all this crazy stuff uh, that happened in, uh, you know, in, in Korea. I. Uh, Blizzard then saw how much money they were making and what they were doing, and they were like, hey, we want a cut of this. And so Blizzard has made mistakes in the past where they basically left money on the table because they didn't have the foresight to see that games that people were going to make those games or make these things into bigger games uh, that are standalone. But at the same time, by doing this, they have, for the most part, removed themselves from the discussion in terms of, like, where are we going to build our next big game? Are we going to build as a mod for Warcraft 3 Reforged? Probably not. Probably not, because they wouldn't own it. Uh, if you make if you make an awesome game and uh, a mod in in uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, in Warcraft Three or Forge, uh, they just own it flat out. Um, cookies, thank you by the way. Uh, let me see that uh, the whole Valve versus uh, Blizzard lawsuit. Uh, anybody remember <laughs> Moba birth from Warcraft Three custom games and Auto Battlers birth from Dota. <clears throat> um, AOE is gonna be king. Oh God, they just basically have uh, Dota regrets. That's exactly it. And I feel like by, you know, being so, uh, um, well, I mean, just by taking this approach, they're essentially eliminating the self contention to ever hosting another big game. Because who's going to, who's going to put in the time and effort to make a big ass game or, you know, custom map gameplay, whatever, uh, in Warcraft 3 or Forged if they don't get it, you know? <clears throat> Imagine like auto chess, imagine companies hating themselves. I know, I know, I know. Um, TA is supposedly coming back too, and that was the king of early modding. Yeah, so it's 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 a mess. Um, somebody made this, which was kind of funny. Custom map that Blizzard gets to keep belongs to Blizzard now. Blizzard policy. Uh, so the uh, the other thing that happened, classic. Uh, they call it they call it classic now, right? Classic TFT, uh, which is basically Warcraft Three: The Frozen Throne. Um, if you own it. If you owned it, or if you had the installation on your computer, uh, and the Battle.net launcher found it, which it would find it, um, <clears throat> it would replace that folder or that, you know, uh, those files with Reforged, even if you did not purchase it. And that is, <laughs> that is troublesome and problematic on so many levels because it's a game that you own, uh, and it was just chilling on your computer. And here comes, here comes a Battle.net launcher. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm going to go and fix that for you. Pulls out Sledgehammer. <laughs> Downgrade. It's, uh, it's just not a good look when you take something that somebody's had on the computer or been tossing around between computers, right? Uh, obviously, you're not going to have the same computer. Uh, over the course of probably, you know, 17 years. I mean, didn't Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne, come out in uh, 2003? I can't remember exactly. Um, and then just replacing it with, with this. It was a, I mean, this is, took, there's not a huge community for Warcraft 3, right? But there is a community for Warcraft 3 that have not stopped playing it since, you know, 2000, whatever, uh, who, who have organized tournaments, uh, who have, you know, made mods, whatever. Uh, it was, it was definitely something that this, this alone has had a significant negative impact on uh, on people that were operating within that space. <clears throat> That's a big bug then. Well, they, you would think that they would say something. <laughs> but, you know, it's still early, I guess. It's still early. So they are, the, I'm pulling up, I have this thread right here that you can see. It says, oh my God, I could go back to classic TFT now. Everyone come read. And so what this guy did was he, uh, 
you know, he showed that you could go through and download the PTR for Warcraft 3, and then you're able to get in and play it to make a couple other changes and everything, then you could get in and play. Um, I will tell you that the uh, the general discussion forums for, uh, for Warcraft 3 is just a mess. Just a mess. Just, just everything. I mean, is it premature to call this a death of Blizzard now? Uh, what are you going to do about this? Uh, hey, hey, I'm loving the game. Somebody's going to love the game. Great. Warcraft 3 or 4, does Blizzard's answer to Fallout 76 change my mind? <laughs> Are they adding the over four hours of reforged cutscenes they advertise? The answer to that is probably no. Um, those who had the original Warcraft 3 overwritten, I believe, could have actual legal cases if they wanted. I mean, I don't know what the rule, the, the legality of that is, but it definitely feels strange that, you know, you have a game on your computer for who knows how long that just is living happily all by itself. It basically belongs to you because you purchased it in a time when you could actually purchase and buy and own fucking games. And then somebody else comes in, and overwrites it. And you know what else happened there? I mean, besides the fact that it was in some people's eyes, a downgrade. Now I don't have any firsthand experience with this because I'm currently not playing blizzard games and they're not really giving me any reason to come back and play them. But from what I've heard, but there are actually features that uh, did not exist or that did exist in classic TFT that reforged uh, or that were, that were removed and put into reforge. I have an example here. Let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> Let me see. So here's an example. So this is Unit Shadows, the drop down here. This is, this is the drop down menu, the, the menu for graphics in uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, over here on the right, you see Unit Shadows is highlighted there. It says on. Over here on the right, you could see it says, and it's actually very, very small, and I apologize for that. Let me see if I can get a little bit bigger here for you guys. It says requires for shadows, requires reforged mode to be enabled. Now, now, before somebody says something, you can go through the config file and make changes that way if you wanted to. Uh, before, which, <laughs> I guess that's a workaround. Uh, otherwise, if you want to be able to disable shadows on, because they're enabled by default now, uh, you'd have to buy Reforge. Now, keep in mind, this is for people who have not purchased Reforge. If somebody had absolutely no interest in buying Reforge, turns on their computer one day, and the Battle.net launcher has updated and replaced their classic installation with Reforge, they are now stuck with this. So I have a list. Yes, I have a list. Zav's already gone through some of it. Um, <clears throat> here are some of the features that were removed. Uh, they removed a clan system. The advanced filtering for custom games you used to be able to go through and actually like sort by you know an advanced filter system. I don't need to explain that. It was actually exists are currently right now. Actually, in StarCraft Two, I think they have an advanced filtering system. Now it's just a basic search, basic search, just by text. Uh, they removed LAN. And we we all know what happens when you remove land. It's happened before. Um, it's not that big of a deal, maybe for for uh, for Warcraft Three because there's not really going to be a, a an esports scene for it. Uh, but here is a video from 2012 at a uh, I believe this is like an ESL. This is like a really old StarCraft Two, and that's exactly what they said. The technology isn't there. Uh, so <clears throat> here's a video, a live video from when right in the middle of a of a tournament, the land goes down. This is the best video I could find of this, so I apologize for this. But uh, but yeah, basically, at this GSL, sorry, not GSL, IPL, not uh, uh, ESL, um, they are basically stuck having to fill time for over seven minutes because <clears throat> because of the fact that they didn't have land or any kind of land support. And you can hear. I think they're saying we want land. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure they're saying we want land. So this is a this is a historically uh, historic thing that uh, uh, Blizzard seems to keep on repeating <laughs> by doing this. They didn't learn the lesson the first time, which is, I guess, fine. But even I think uh, if you own the classic version because it was overwritten by Reforged, that means that you have to log in and be online in order to play single player, which is what I've read. Again, I have no experience firsthand doing it. But that sounds like something Blizzard would do. Uh, let's see what else. They removed custom campaigns. Uh, the uh, the unit <clears throat> the unit movement. So the animation is locked to uh, twenty frames per second. The original frame rate for the units because originally they were animated. They were, they were sprites. They were animated, but they were supposed to be well, not sprites, but they were uh, uh, the way that they animated them was similar to sprites where they have like kind of locked to different things. They didn't have that fluid motion, I guess, that you have now. Um, 
And in in this case, you know, where they were supposed to overhaul all the models, probably all the man animations, everything as well. Um, well, it's still locked at 20 FPS. So it kind of looks a little janky when you're moving units around. And it's kind of shitty, too, because if you look at StarCraft II Remastered, I don't know what the frame rate is and the animations there, but it definitely looks like it's a lot more than 20 frames per second. <clears throat> Time to start a business selling ISOs on my install disk. <laughs> yeah, huh. Just like, here's your thumb drive. Here's the ISO. <laughs> Just go ahead and mount it and install. You'll be fine. Um, obviously, I mentioned already I mentioned already that you cannot enable shadows in Classic without uh, config editing or just buying Reforge. Just buy Reforge. It's fine. Uh, translations. Uh, if one of your translations are a complete mess, um, like apparently really bad. Now, I don't speak any other languages outside of uh, English-ish. Um, so I can't really vouch for that myself, but I think I've seen it enough to, to, yeah, it's probably an issue. The cutscenes have not changed. It's still the old UI. Yes, it's still the old UI. They promise a new UI. Now, where are people get, where are people getting this information that they're supposed to have all of these fun, crazy things in Warcraft 3 Reforged? I wonder where they're getting it. Let's go to, uh, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's go to Warcraft, th play Warcraft3.com. Let's see what they have here. Uh-huh, Reforge, Visitor, okay, Legendary Campaigns, Limitless Custom Games. Oh, wow, really? Uh, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the trailer. This is on their PlayWarcraft3.com website here. And in this trailer, work in progress, art and effects not final. Look at all these crazy and dramatic angles. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Remember seeing this and thinking, holy shit, this is amazing. I was, I was completely sold on Warcraft 3 Reforge when I saw this trailer at BlizzCon. Uh, it's, it's, it's promising uh, as we get through this thing though let's see let's fast forward here it shows that there are unit upgrades in terms of like the way they look uh and i, I haven't seen any pictures side by side for what i hear they're not uh what does it say did it say fully animated too yeah we're going to just we'll just skip that part it's fine uh let's see uh remastered maps of campaigns uh the reality of this one i believe is that they didn't actually do a whole lot of actual updating to the uh to get out of here uh to the actual maps themselves <clears throat> Uh, uses Arthas. <laughs> it's the only one they had. Uh, it says right here, UI and world editor are upgraded. The UI, in fact, has not been upgraded. Reforged in 4K resolution. I, probably, maybe. Um, way hundred bake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Warcraft 3 Reforged. Oh, bum, bum, bum. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're too late. This entire city must be purged. <gasps> and then, of course, what it really looks like is, is this on your hand the right? So that was the gameplay 2019 lol. Uh, that was the gameplay trailer. Uh, and they showed the Arthas, the strat, the calling a strat cinematics. Uh, and it just, it's, it's just, Fucking look here's here it is the calling campaign trailer. Look at it. It's the goddamn trailer for the calling a strat. Oh no. It's the only thing they Too ever late. teased because it clearly it was the only thing they infected. actually finished. They may look and they didn't now. even put it in the final game because probably because it would have stood out from everything else that did not have custom cinematics and all that stuff. Um right here with four plus hours of reforged reforged in-game cutscenes. <sighs> so this is not a case of everybody is just mad because every time there's a new game that's released, people just get mad, like just for no reason, which is a thing, which is absolutely a thing. People just hate things. When things get released, people just hate it. That's the, their default thing is just, oh, you know what? I hate it. Change my mind. Uh, this is clearly a case that is now reinforced with their own fucking website that shows that they promised all of these things and then underdelivered on so many of them. Um, my guess, my guess, uh, Blizzard polish is a thing of the past. Yeah, it lacks overall polish, which is not standard for Blizzard, right? It does. It that's that doesn't feel like Blizzard. It doesn't feel like Blizzard. <sighs> that's the Blizzard that we know anyway. So my guess is that Reforge didn't hit an internal pre-order quota, right? They were like, oh, we're gonna build this thing and Classic is blowing up and everything. And so we'll, we'll build Warcraft 3 and uh, and we'll get a shitload of pre-orders. And, uh, and then they didn't hit those numbers. They didn't hit those numbers. And they decided, let's go and cut features. Let's go and cut you know, resources to that department or whatever, right? 
let's just not follow through with those things that we had promised because people will still buy the game uh but unfortunately not enough people pre-ordered it and that and, and so we can't really we can't really afford <laughs> Small indie company, guys. We can't really afford to to put money into something that's not going to earn us money back before we even release the game. That's what it feels like happened. Uh, externally, so internally, yeah, I feel like they didn't hit a quota and they decided to go ahead and just basically shit can the whole project. They're just going to release it. Did you notice that there was basically no advertising? The only advertising that I saw was from the official Blizzard social channels. A tweet. A fucking tweet. I didn't see an advertisement anywhere. I didn't see anything on, on, on Instagram. Usually I get like a, you know, something, whatever, something that's relative to something that I've, I've looked up before literally anywhere else. Or maybe I said the word Warcraft three will show up as an advertisement on, uh, on Instagram or Twitch or whatever. Uh, you got commercials on Twitch on Twitch. There were ads. Oh, wow, okay. So you got some ads on Twitch. That's something. <laughs> uh, you didn't see any remaster ads on YouTube. Yeah, the day it came out it was too late when I remembered about it. Didn't Blizzard outsource Warcraft Three or Forge to a Malaysian studio? So yeah, there, are, there, are, there are th people are saying that yeah, that they outsourced it, whatever. Um, which is a, yeah, it is a very common thing to uh, to have things outsourced. Uh, but if Blizzard, that doesn't mean that we got we have to blame the studio in Malaysia or whatever that did this. This is this is Blizzard's fault. And real quick, I. Uh, just just so because I know somebody out there is saying, no, no, it's Activision. I use the words Blizzard and Activision interchangeably. Uh, they are one and the same. There is no difference between the two. Uh, by saying, no, this was Activision, you are basically enabling Blizzard to continue to do this kind of shit because then they can rely on a subset of people who would just say, no, it was Activision. And then Blizzard could just say, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and so you are effectively an enabler of that kind of behavior by saying, by saying, no, 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 it was Activision. Activision was putting pressure on them and everything. No, no, that shit's done. It's been done. It has been done. Blizzard and Activision. Those are two names that are completely interchangeable. Okay. So I will continue to say Blizzard because that is the company that who has, who's behind, who the name is on the product. Uh, but just know that I use those words interchangeably so this is blizzard this is also activision now um let's talk about <sighs> i mean buddy broke out the party hats when they got out so yeah there must be something going on right they're just like see you later and then just do a huge party the second they stepped out the door uh was it, first i saw was somebody on the on the uh, battle net was also playing otherwise i had no idea yeah there was just very little very little actual coverage uh or advertising done even I even feel like and you know maybe maybe I just happen to not come across these videos, but I, I even feel like we didn't get a whole lot of like beta hype leading up to it. Usually most games nowadays, especially in the past several years, um, beta is effectively an ad campaign. Um I didn't I don't really feel like I saw a whole lot of videos in my feed, uh in my YouTube feed that was like beta footage for whatever, you know, whatever scenario in in Warcraft 3. I just, I don't think, I didn't see any of that. And so I have to just assume that there wasn't a whole lot of money put into, you know, exercising the power of your influencers who are like really into Blizzard products. Uh, and yeah. Uh, the only coverage I saw was the Wildhead models and cinematic coverage. Yeah, this shit show has put, put the nail in the coffin of Diablo 4 if they keep pulling this kind of crap. Yeah, you have to remember, you have to remember this. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could remember. Like when I think, when I think of this as like a whole pre order thing, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, we look at Fallout 76. It's like, Fallout 76, well, that was a different company, right? But Blizzard's doing the same thing. Every company is basically doing the same thing. So just because, I mean, I hate to say this, but we have to punish them all equally, all right? We have to punish them all equally. You can't say, well, no, this company is different, so I'm going to trust them and pre-order from them. You clearly can't do that anymore. And there's like a catch-22 here. I'm guessing that because they didn't get enough pre-orders, that they end up cutting a whole lot of stuff. So does that mean if we did go and pre-order, like we were not supposed to, that we would have gotten a much more fully fleshed out game? So that's, it's kind of a catch-22. It's like maybe people are wising up and they're just like, oh, wow, Warcraft 3 Reforged, that's amazing. But I'm going to wait on the pre-order. And then turn around and 
and this happens and it's kind of like, oh, well, we didn't put all these features in because nobody pre-ordered. <laughs> <laughs> our predictions were <laughs> blank uh i don't do eternal yeah do eternal that I, have, I haven't pre-ordered that yet but goddamn <laughs> it's hard not to uh, i don't pre-order even for cdpr and they are a company right now that i have the most faith in uh well there are a few companies still that i pre-order something from just that uh, just on the idea but blizzard isn't one anymore uh i still trust cd project red maybe obsidian but not many others i'd rather take them uh i'd rather take the fall than be forced to pre-order um what up, Incogni? Gearbox pulled with the Colonial Marines, and, avo and I've avoided... Yeah, that's right. They did pull out with Colonial Marines. That was a huge one. Any devs can use Kickstarter. AAA companies should know how to finance games. Exactly. Exactly. Pre-order Nintendo. Pfft. Wow. Nintendo's the only one that hasn't really dropped the ball on any of this stuff. <laughs> We're going to talk about Nintendo in a bit. Some crazy numbers there. Uh, but listen. Listen. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about Blizzard and, I guess, money. Right? Uh... So as I was going through this and talking about this with some friends and, and kind of looking at online and everything, it seemed like the amount of money that Blizzard is making on other properties, it's like Overwatch, right? Overwatch League is a big, it's, that's a good example. Um, Overwatch League ha is pulling, is throwing so much big money around that I can't imagine how many pre-orders they would have needed to to show that it can be a money maker, a, like alongside uh, Overwatch. Like it must have been just nothing, right? Because, I mean, here, let's, let me see. Uh, let me pull up the story here. This is on ESPN. Uh, Twitch didn't want the rights to Overwatch League. Yeah, so here we go. So uh, this, is a, this is an article from May 10th, 2018. It goes over how much money all of the individual cities uh, that were part of the uh, first season of uh, Overwatch League had to pay in order to get involved into uh, get involved in the in, in the in the series. Uh, and in this case, you can see by the title there, it's thirty to sixty million dollars. Uh, at this point, when this was written, uh, there were already twelve teams. I guess that already put in twenty million dollars each. It also goes over that they. Uh, they pulled in, or this is, well, that they had pulled in $120 million in advertising, and I found out from another source that it was, uh, that they had a $45 million deal with Twitch. So that's a lot of money. And that $45 million from Twitch is basically for exclusivity rights. Uh, long, what is this, long flights, mirror meta is uncertain in 2020 Overwatch League? Okay, we'll, 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 we'll check it out. I already have enough here. <laughs> <laughs> to go over uh but right now what i'm trying to show you guys is that blizzard is getting money right in this case it's coming from you know, just a number of people uh i actually have a list here uh so some of the teams some of the teams were basically uh the, oh thanks thanks nick uh some of the teams are actually um basically bought or paid for by like a single person. So like one of them is the New England, New England Patriots owner, Robert Kraft, who's worth $6.5 billion. Uh, so he put some money down. Uh, the Denver Nuggets slash LA Rams owner, Stan Crunk, 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 Crunke, <laughs> Crunk, uh, who has a value, uh, a, a net worth of $8.8 .8 billion. So these are like, and then there's a number of other like, you know, uh, um, like VCs and everything that got in and pitched in for like, you know, various other cities, Houston, San Francisco and all of them. Um, and so these are like individuals who have put a shitload of money into a product that seems like it's been wildly mismanaged. Uh, initially it felt like, it felt like they were doing great. I mean, shit, they have $240 million from teams. They have uh, $120 million in advertising. They had $45 million from Twitch to say exclusive to them. And that was good for the first two seasons. Uh, I was making money from venture capital, but it's basically vaporware. The viewership isn't there. Exactly. The viewership isn't there. Uh, in a recent article, and it might have been that same article, actually, you linked. Uh, I read that they're still trying to turn a profit on those investments. And so it's like, <laughs> like they haven't even turned a profit yet uh, on these things. Um, and so last week, there was an article popped up and it says that uh, Activision Blizzard ended up signing a multi-year deal with Google. So it sounds like, oh, you, they, they needed, their, their deal with uh, Twitch ran out, and Twitch is probably just like, well, you know what? We gave you $45 million for the first couple of years. We're not really interested in giving you any more money for anything else. Now, in any other situation, we'd probably be like, come on, Twitch, like, you know, 
put some money out for something, right? Because they're losing creators and all this stuff. But this is this is an instance where it's like, you know, as as uh, I'm said, like that's a their viewership was so low. Twitch is probably just like, mm, you gonna go somewhere else? Oh, oh, okay, cool. Uh, we don't know how much this deal is worth. What the value is here? Uh, we don't know if there was like a bidding war or anything between the two. Uh, but clearly, Google was willing to pay more money than Amazon was for uh, exclusive rights to, uh, uh, I think it's like WoW Arena, uh, I think it's like the Mythic Dungeon stuff, um, obviously, uh, Overwatch. I think, every, uh, I think everything except for, uh, except for StarCraft 2. Which, as a StarCraft fan, I'm okay with. I'm, as, as, long as, as long as Blizzard has forgotten that StarCraft exists, I'm totally fine. Um, <laughs> what is this? Uh, Amazon paid Google. <laughs> Amazon paid Google to take them. Uh, we'll find out the next stockholders meeting. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. We'll see what they say there. I'm, I'm genuinely look, look, interested in, uh, in what they have there. Uh, StarCraft 2 is still in its own bubble, which is good. Exactly, which is good. You forgot to mention Heroes of the Storm. That's the... <laughs> Game is dead. <laughs> Blizzard needs to be an esport. We're gonna keep on putting, paying money, or just throwing money away uh, until it's successful. You're gonna like it. Or the beatings. What is it? Uh, the morale will. Uh, uh, it's morale will improve. Uh, the beating something. I can't remember that saying goes, but you guys know what I'm saying. Heroes of what? Hot esport. No land. Oh man. So. So what happens? What happens when? Uh, when the supply of money because you, this is blizzard's taking money from you know these these billionaires from these vcs from uh from platforms like google previously twitch they're taking big money from all of these different places and it's going into a product that personally and i feel like i'm not alone here i don't see a future with i don't see a future with overwatch league as a as a stable esport that's earning money not a lot of esports earn money right or, or turn a profit uh, a lot of times it's just throwing money at advertising and then that's just a, me a method of just another, another form of advertisement right like a like a, like the advertising section of a newspaper <laughs> but when is when is the supply of money uh uh gonna cease to meet the demand of blizzard's greed because that's what it feels like it feels like like this is this is a this is this is blizzard being greedy year over year getting worse um what happens when when you know some of these multi-billionaires <laughs> realize that they that they've lost all this money because something was potentially or allegedly maybe i don't know for sure uh mismanaged you know if that's the case if blizzard really truly is completely dropping the ball on managing all these people's millions tens hundreds of millions of dollars so what happens then so the, the lawsuits are going to start piling up. <laughs> I'm sure they all have contracts, but if you think that a, that a six point something or eight point eight billion dollar billionaire uh, isn't going to have a bulletproof contract, then you might be sorely mistaken. They want all the monies because EA ain't getting it. <laughs> EA, meanwhile, is like earning our trust back somehow. Uh, our group of friends was so we're so into Overwatch for a long time. Now I don't know anyone who's not fed up. Uh, Overwatch might be failing, but they have a new game. Overwatch 2! When was the last time you heard anything about Overwatch 2? I was, it came up the other day because we were talking about Overwatch, and I was like, oh my god, I forgot that Overwatch 2 was a thing. I just forgot. How can they let me forget that Overwatch 2 is supposed to be a thing? They did say they're going to put their head back down and keep on running, so maybe they just, maybe we all just kind of forget about it, and then they'll come back later and be like, oh, hey, look. Um... Hi, EA, EA is the Kylo Ren. Oh my God, EA is the Kylo Ren of video game studios. Oh my God. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Wow. I uh, so let me read this quote. Let me read this quote here. This is from. Uh, let me read a, read a quote. Okay. So if you guys notice that there are a, there's been a whole bunch of casters that have been. Uh, basically just taking a different path than what where Overwatch is going. Um, they basically are no longer going to be casting for whatever reasons they have. Um, five of them, I think, so far. Maybe six. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it says, quote, I felt there wasn't anybody in current leadership after Nate Nanzer left uh, that had a deep understanding of esports. 
And this is a quote from, uh, from Monte Cristo. So Monte Cristo is a, uh, is a very popular, we just say, just general esports personality. If you don't know who he is, don't be a dick. <laughs> just know, just know that he is respected, he is experienced, and he is known. Uh, and so when he says that he feels that nobody in the current leadership uh, is, un- has a deep understanding of esports, uh, he's speaking specifically about Pete uh, Vastelica, who is the CEO of Blizzard Esports, previously of Fox Sports, who came in and replaced Nate Nanzer, I think, what was it, last year, I think, right? Um, uh, Tyler, they're already into, what is this? Uh, has Zoe left yet? No, Zoe has not left yet. Um, as far as I know, I don't know. It, it seemed like they were just happy. It was one person like every other week, it felt like, for a minute there. Uh, and, and so there were rumors that the Cassis were asked to take a pay cut of up to 30% after season one. So in season one, there was, they had such, I mean, it was such a good season for them, right? They said the viewership was up. They said the excitement was up and all this stuff. And I remember like season one, I mean, as was mentioned already here in chat, like season one, everyone was watching it, right? It was the thing that so many people watched. Uh, and then when they reached season two and, and all the casters and everybody was and all the talent and everybody was expecting to get, um, you know, basically get a raise, right? Instead, they get kicked back and say, oh, no, we actually were hoping that you guys would get a take a 30 percent uh, cut. I think what ended up happening was they, I guess, internally, the talent uh, disclosed their own financials or their own earnings to uh, or, or how much they were making to uh, each other. And they found that it was so wildly just like the levels was all over the place that a uh, majority of the talent actually declined to take a pay raise after they had negotiated uh, amongst the talent. Uh, and in order to allow the lower tiered, uh, you know, payment paid individuals to actually get more money and ultimately ended up being an average of about a 5%, um, uh, a 5% payroll increase across the board for the talent because the talent was looking out for each other, which is great. Uh, it really should be, it really should be the company looking out for the talents, but I guess that doesn't really apply in this in this case. Um, then we have an article here, and this is uh, oh, so this is the article actually I have right here. Sorry, uh, I have a quote here. Time to unionize, boy. Talent union, see union, yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean the union exists everywhere else for these for this exact purpose. Uh, so here it says it says uh, what the part what the departures signify is that we're putting together the best possible pool of talent that we think fits our audience, uh, what our audience is looking for, and our vision for the product we're building. We're bringing in people who we think know the game as well as anyone out there or better than anybody out there. That was Pete Bastelica, CEO of Blizzard Esports, previously of Fox Sports, uh, basically saying, yeah, these people left because what we're trying to do is get people that are that fit our vision for the future of the league uh, and that have a better understanding of the product, uh, which you can imagine, uh, you know, this basically in direct response to what Monte Cristo said. Um, you could imagine Monte Cristo probably wasn't having any of it, and he wasn't. Uh, Monte Cristo actually tweeted out, I'll read it here. It says, so now Pete Flastelica is just lying. All the casters who left Owl had been asked to return to the league. So if, if so it wasn't the properties decision as suggests here. And so in this article is where I pulled that quote from. Um, yeah, he's basically throwing everybody that left under the bus. <laughs> Just say, just just say, oh, well, you know, we're looking for the best talent. Apparently, the people that left were not the best talents. Someone like fucking Monte Cristo, not the best talent, huh? Uh, yeah, EA Earning Trust, Respawn CEO, now EA LA Studio uh, CEO. Yeah, huge middle finger. Uh, that fit our capitalistic goals. Vision, exactly. Move everyone over to the Call of Duty League. Oh, man. We need to move on past uh, uh, only giving a shit about shareholders to start taking care of the reason, uh, or take care of the rest of the stakeholders. Uh, they think people will transition to esports from regular sports viewers. They want to sell shirts and fucking hats. Yes. No, that is it. I mean, that's really it. Ultimately it's, it comes down to Blizzard is trying to turn it into a, I mean, here's an article from 2018 on ESPN.com. You know, they, they, they want to turn it into a full fledged sport that you're going to watch on TV and you're going to, you're going to buy the, the, you know, the hats and the shirts and all that stuff, which I understand that. Like, I buy, I have esports shirts and hats and shit. Um, you mean, oh, shut up, guns. 
<laughs> oh, you mean Activision? <laughs> Corporate executives need to take care of the employees, not only the shareholder. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. But that's clearly not the case anymore with uh, uh, when it comes to um, comes to Blizzard. So you know, there's a, there's a, there's it is an old saying that the only thing that can kill WoW is WoW. And I think, you know, that was like a 2011 saying, right? 2010 or something like that. Um, during the peak, the wrath, the wrath era. It's like, oh my God, things are going so great. The only thing that could kill WoW is WoW itself. And I feel like we've gotten to the point where we could we basically apply that to Activision Blizzard, uh, where we could say the only thing that could kill Blizzard, Activision, is is them. Is the, and and I, I strongly feel with all these actions and everything that we're seeing, I mean, I just, I, we just talked about, you know, two of their major the warcraft franchise and the the overwatch franchise and both of them are just having so many you know so many shortcomings and issues and just uh misgivings and just just there's so many things that uh that they're just dropping the ball on on two fronts i don't know what's going on in the world of warcraft side of things right i'm, I'm not following that news anymore um but i fucking hope that <laughs> That they're at least taking care of you guys. Uh, I know that in the StarCraft community, they're not really touching it. And that's a blessing uh, right there. Uh, it doesn't sound like Wild Blizzard's earned the respect and you might not uh, resub back to vanilla. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, man. Uh, I don't get honest. Even EA will nuzzle the consumer's <laughs> dick on occasion to not appear completely evil. Yeah. Uh, BFA did almost that. Wild is just coasting from what we've seen. That's the best you could hope for. Like, I mean, again, as, as a StarCraft fan, the best you could hope for is that Blizzard just kind of forgets uh, that something exists and that you, at, at a point where the, where the game is in good shape. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe you'll get like an expansion every once in a while or something like that. But as long as they're not trying to milk you guys for money, right? Not trying to put in more, uh, uh, you know, more microtransactions or gift shop there, you know, whatever shop stuff or whatever. Uh, Jesus. I think Bungie's leaving celebration said it all back then. It did. It truly did. Classic is great. Retail, not so much. That's wild. Classic is great. And in this case, with Warcraft 3, they actually ended up essentially ruining Classic for a lot of people. Um, Queer probably has a knife to Active Blizz's throat to not touch StarCraft 2. It's, it, is, it is one of those things that it's, very, it's a very robust community, especially Brood War. Um, and that, what is this? It's a, did you also hear, watch a story that Blizzard does allow people to create a new account after they are banned? from uh banned in wow i did not see that um where they just create a new account after they're banned i'm not gonna watch the video right now but uh i have to assume that that's yeah it, it, i mean i feel like that's that's a common thing uh linus tech tips on huh? what uh so so yeah the only thing that's going to kill activision blizzard is going to be activision blizzard, blizzard themselves and it certainly feels like they're trying their hardest to do that uh before the end of this decade that's for sure i don't know man like it just it doesn't it it I was a huge Blizzard fan. Ten years ago, we had one of the biggest shows on on the internet, right? Like seriously, it was like the biggest podcast for World of Warcraft. Um, well, I just said biggest live video podcast for World of Warcraft, because um, we were competing with like Total Biscuit and shit, like the you know Blue Please. That was a tough one. <laughs> uh, and as I as just the biggest World of Warcraft fan for such a long period of time with Game Breaker, yeah, Legendary, all that. Um, it just, it pains me to see, like, you know, this is where Blizzard's at. Like, I even said, you know, probably like four years ago or something like that, I was at BlizzCon, and I even said there, I was like, you know, I was, we were drinking with a bunch of, you know, a bunch of you guys, um, just fucking having a good time, talking about WoW, talk about whatever, and I remember saying, it was like, I will always come to BlizzCon for the community, uh, but I may not always come for BlizzCon, and... I figured that's something that probably wouldn't happen for like another 10 years, but here we are, like this is only like two and a half years later, and I, f I strongly feel like that moment has come where it's like, I'm not going to buy a BlizzCon ticket. You know, I might go down there for, for BlizzCon, but during, during BlizzCon, uh, just to, you know, hang out with people and drink and everything, and then I'll sleep all day. <laughs> I'll sleep all day while you guys are, are, are wake up early, hung over, try to go to the, try to go to the damn thing. And then, uh, yeah, I'll go to Disneyland. I don't know. One of the two we'll do photo shoots. Yeah, that's what we'll do. And then I'll hang out, hang out. We'll fucking drink at night. It'll be great. You guys will feel me on everything that I need to know. Get to save 250, $300 or whatever it's going to cost. <sighs> oh, 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 do we have an update? Hold on a second. Woo, woo, woo. Hold on. Where's it at? Whoop. Hey! Not the sound that I wanted to play. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> One second. Ooh. It has indeed. <laughs> I was supposed to hit the air horn button. I totally missed. Uh, the <laughs> it has. It is now 0. 0.7. Uh, so it is no longer tied for the second lowest uh, score on Metacritic. It now is firmly the second lowest score. I think NBA 2K20 is the third lowest on that. Uh, it's still <laughs> it is still a very appropriate sound sound effect. Thank you so much for putting that out. <laughs> the death sound. Wow, 0. 0.7. What's the lowest? I, I we talked about it earlier, but in case you missed it, it was day one Gary's incident. It was surrounding the. Uh, it was this whole fiasco surrounding a, a video that Total Biscuit made back in 2000, I think 12, uh, where he basically trashed the game, deservedly trashed the game, and then Wild Game Studio, the creators, the developers for uh, day one, ended up uh, sending a um, uh, a takedown notice to have Total Biscuit's video removed, and I think other people's videos removed as well. Total Biscuit did a follow up video and basically trashing them and said, "You can't fucking do this, whatever." Uh, and then of course that motivated the entire. Uh, uh, community to start, you know, review bombing them. But that was because of their actions following release by taking down videos. Like I said at the beginning of this feed, this score is purely because of the game that was released. Like this is because of the state of the game. Wild, just wild, just just wild. I don't know if there's any recovering from that. And it, also, there's something else I didn't point out at the beginning. I should point this out too. That Metacritic score of 63 is the lowest that blizzard has gotten on their games um like if you pull up their catalog on on here that is that 63 is the lowest so even their meta score which usually there is a there, there there's going to be a difference between the user score a user score sometimes is just you know compounded by the fact that people are really upset and they're making accounts just to you know give this thing a low score uh but the meta score is typically filtered reviews approved reviews whatever and even that one is sitting at 63 the lowest of all their games right now just wild. Just, just absolutely wild. Uh, for a AAA dev, this is just embarrassing. Exactly. Um, only, okay, 0. 0.4, only 0. 0.4 left to go. Uh, uh, what is the workout 3 or 4? This is the game that was promised. Score, 75. Yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Yes, thank you. Th there was a number of things I want to point out here, but I knew we had so much stuff to talk about. So this is great. So here's 75. So this this one right here, I actually read this one too. It says Warcraft 3. Now this is a positive score of 75, right? Or well, it's green anyways. Reforged isn't a game that isn't the game that was promised, but it is still a valuable reconstruction of one of the most influential titles in the history of video games. This release is sadly riddled with bugs as well as marred by terrible decisions by Blizzard, uh, particularly that of false advertising that persists even now after launch. However, despite this, there is little doubting that Warcraft 3 or Forge has a compelling story that, even 18 years on, remains one of the most engaging in the genre. The gameplay holds strong to this day, and with tweaks and upgrades, this is an undeniable diamond in the rough. It is a very, 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 very rough diamond. Uh, <laughs> that probably is just basically the rough. Um, yeah. How the fuck is that 75? You took the words right out of my mouth, Jelly. Uh, it's... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's riddled with negatives but still 75 he had me up until that last second sentence yeah they're giving them credit for what they accomplished 18 years ago that's it that's what it is like and and that already exists like i said that already exists we already pulled it up at the beginning uh I'll pull it up again here so you guys can see you know there's no reason to say like there's no when you're reviewing a game like this that's that's a remake you're not going to give them credit for elements that persist through the original version this is what this is what the original uh, ROC got. A Metacritic score of 92. They already got their score for the things that existed 18 years ago. We don't need to give them credit for that. And so, yeah, reviewers, like that review that we saw from WFCCC Tech, whatever it was, um, you know, that's, it's, it's kind of misleading because he's given credit to something that was done by, I mean, quite literally, in a completely different team. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so go from this to to this and it's just it's crazy it's just it's just I, I, yeah I, I don't even have words for this 18 years later and it just bombed obviously not enough <laughs> yeah obviously not enough uh well, I need to go make art and Blizzard on fire. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. No, Blizzard is definitely on fire right now. I don't know if I don't know if they have any interest. I really don't know if they have any interest in putting the fires out as long as there's still money coming in from whatever source it is, whether it's from us, you know, paying for whatever 
uh, you know, pre-order or whatever subscription or for whatever. I don't know. It's just, it just, I don't think, I don't know if they have an interest. I, I feel like it's just like make a shitload of money, drive the brand into the ground, and then, I don't know, sell it to EA or something like that. <sighs> I have no idea what they're going to do. I mean, they're not going to, I shouldn't say that. It's a little, it's, sorry, it's a little naive to say that. Activision, Blizz as a whole are making plenty of money. They're not going anywhere. They can sully the brand all they want because there's still going to be like 25% of the crowd that's going to say, oh, well, you know what? Uh, that was Activision doing it, not Blizzard. And the other half of the crowd, another 25% of the crowd is going to say, well, if it wasn't for the people on the forums, the, sorry, the purists on the forums bitching about this, that, whatever, we could have gotten awesome cutscenes, but they decided probably, they, they probably decided to remove the cutscenes because everyone on the forums were, were bitching that it wasn't going to be the authentic Warcraft 3 Reigns of Chaos slash TFT uh, experience. And that's not true. They advertise that these things are going to be in. <laughs> But as long as people keep coming to Blizzard's defense on these things, they will continue to just make money. They will continue to just, just to do this to make money for the, for the MVP, the minimum viable product. Just, it just, it just, needs to ha- just needs to have box art. <laughs> That's all. Just needs to have box art. Oh, man. Okay, so let's move on. Can we move on? There's a lot. That was a lot. Uh, worst case scenario, Blizzard gets uh, gets to say at least we're not Bethesda. Well, Bethesda's looking pretty good right now. <laughs> Digital only. Oh my god, let me take a drink. Woof. Oh, I'm not. I'm not gonna knock. I, I will never knock Square Enix. Oh, but yes, yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Though. That's Square, not Enix. Yeah, yeah. Should we move on to that Tim Tim ripoff? <laughs> So I uh, we're gonna quickly cover this part because I really want to get to the Nintendo stuff. But this is uh, this applies to all of you guys who are into Pokemon out there, uh, and not Temtem for whatever reason. So uh, av- available in February 2020, uh, Pokemon is gonna have a feature called Home, and Home is gonna allow you to take all the Pokemon that you have collected through uh, a Let's Go series, uh, the uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, uh, um, the Pokemon Bank that you have on your DS and uh, Pokemon Go. And you'll be able to use this service to effectively store your uh, your, your Pokemon together. Now, this service is going to cost money. And the only reason I bring this up is because people got really upset with, uh, with the fact that this was going to cost extra money. But the amount of money is pretty negligible. Let me go over here to premium. You can see the Nintendo shop eShop price is $2.99 a month. Keep in mind that Nintendo's uh, Nintendo Online service, which I believe is required in order to use this, also costs two dollars and ninety nine cents. So, yeah, it's 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 a nickel and dime thing for sure. But only if you play this game. Pardon me, sorry. Um, and so you see, it's a fifty. It's sixteen dollars for twelve months. Uh, there are some limitations. You can see right here. We'll go and scroll down. Go over some of the limitations here. Uh, so you can move Pokemon from the Pokemon Bank, uh, which is un- it's unavailable for your. Uh, that basically you can't pull anything off of your DS uh, with a basic. You have to have a premium. Uh, you can only move thirty to your uh, to your home. Um, in premium, you get six thousand. And then everything else is just, you know, the, there's a room trade and there's a judge function. The judge function, I think it just basically ranks your Pokemon uh, against other Pokemon of this of equal, whatever. Um, and then the room trade is kind of an interesting concept. I guess you could just get into like a virtual room with a whole bunch of folks and then you could basically trade, trade with them. It's like a party where you guys all trade in Pokemon. I don't know how this works. It sounds like a Tupperware party, but for Pokemon, uh, I don't know if this has any value, uh, with anybody that's actually watching this right now. Um, but I wanted to bring it up because, yeah, it was, it's, it's a system that has brought some controversy because it shows, it does show that Nintendo is kind of leaning toward nickel and diming. But if I'm going to get nickel and dimed, I like this system. I would rather not pay 10 or $15 a month for online services to cover games that I'm not even going to play. Right now, I pay $3 a month. And I get access to, like, this, the SNES uh, emulator and the Nintendo emulator and all that stuff. Um, but I'm but I'm only paying three dollars a month, and I get online capabilities for a number of games. It just so happens that this one has a ton of features that are maybe valuable to Pokemon players. I'm glad I don't have to pay for that, right? Um, Tetris 99 alone is worth the cost for some folks. Yeah, totally. This is not too bad. If all the features were available on both mobile and Switch, so that's something. Yeah, so this is something I want to show you guys too. Uh, cause I know some of you guys are Pokemon fans and I want to make sure that you go in this knowing what the fuck they're doing with this. So 
Pay close attention. At first glance, it seems like, oh man, Pokemon Home, I could just move things around all the way to home and then move them wherever. No. No. Look at the arrows. Pokemon Bank, one-way street. You move it to home, you cannot move it back. Okay? Uh, uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu. You can move it to home, you cannot move it back. Uh, you can trade them together. Like, as long as they stay in their own little area, they could, you know, their own little Venn diagram corner over there, right? Uh, you could trade them together. So between Let's Go uh, Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, you can move them together. Um, Pokemon Go, as you can see, this is coming soon. Uh, but it's a one-way arrow. So I can only assume that that also means it's going to be one way, which I think that one is actually kind of interesting because I still feel like Pokemon Go is um, probably one of their most valuable uh, 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 installments. I mean, Pokemon Sword and Shield is is massive. The sales on that is just fucking stupid. Uh, but that's the only one as of right now that can trade back and forth. So what does what does this mean? If you are a Pokemon fan that maybe you were hardcore back in the you know the, the 2DS 3DS days, uh, and so you have a bank just like just packed with Pokemon, um, but maybe say you don't play Pokemon Sword and Shield, there's no value for you here. You can't even, even if you have Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu, or even just Go, there's no value for you here because you can't move things to that. Um, so be mindful of which direction things can move. Uh, exactly, Red War. It's essentially a way to move stuff to Sword and Shield. So if, you're, if you play Sword and Shield, then you're set. <laughs> you are set. I was actually surprised that... Uh, you know, we're talking about four titles that are on the Switch, right? Sword, Shield, Eevee, Pikachu. And they're not all interchangeable. I was a little surprised about that. Now, I'm not, I don't follow a lot of, you know, what, you know, what Nintendo's doing with Pokemon in terms of, like, their feature set and everything. But just, just from a, from a general gaming perspective, I do think it's odd <laughs> that they're not interchangeable. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> so, um... If you build Pokemon to go, it would sort of fuck up how Go works. They would lose money that way. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Look at the features page. Down to version features. Let me see. Mystery gifts. Your room. Version features. Yeah, so this, yeah, I saw this list. Yeah, we'll go over, we'll go over here. Uh, so it says right here, uh, move Pokemon. So actually, this is exactly what I explained. Move Pokemon with, po with uh, Pokemon Bank. It shows you that there's limitations between the Switch version and the mobile phone version. This isn't too unusual. A lot of times when you have a version, a, a, a storefront or any kind of like gaming, multi-platform gaming uh, uh, game uh, on multiple platforms, there's usually some kind of limitations of certain things that you could do. Like you can't make purchases on mobile or something like that because it doesn't go through the App Store and Apple and, Apple and Google have their own rules on how you can manage that. Um, so yeah, I don't know exactly how that... Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So seeing that there is a difference between the Switch version and the mobile version in terms of what you can move around and everything is not totally a surprise. Um, but it is a lot of stuff, though. You can't even, like, check the news on the Switch version. That's weird. Uh, Declan, the Pokemon cards yet? Nope. <laughs> no. Um, they aren't here chances because the technology isn't there. <laughs> it's just not there. Biggest problem is can't trade on Switch. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. Is you can't trade. You can't trade on Switch between the two the two franchises, the two pairs of franchises, which I think that's, that's why I said before, it's like, that's weird that they exist on the same platform, but they can't talk to each other like that. Unless, unless you're dumping things from let's go into sword and shield. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, if you're a Pokemon fan, maybe this, there's some value here for you. Uh, $15, 15 dollars a year. It's not a lot of money. Uh, $3 a month obviously adds up to more than $15.99 a month. So if you're a Pokemon fan, maybe just throw down on $16. But you can also try it for free and then uh, and, and have access to a number of features to at least see if it's something that you want to even use. And this is something that's coming in February. Farming Simulator 19 is indeed free on Epic Games Store if you want to go check it out. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, I actually don't have any. God, I really not have any. Let me get. I don't think I have any kind of backdrop or anything for this. Let me see. Nintendo. Uh, I, I, I farmed up all of these uh, uh, quarterly report stuff and I did not actually <laughs> uh, I did not get anything to put up in the background. So how it is. We'll go to Nintendo. We'll just leave this thing up on screen. This looks important. All right. <laughs> this is their investor relations information. So we'll just leave this up on the screen while we talk about some of the numbers here. So uh, Nintendo's earnings, uh, the, the quarterly report that they had just, what was it, um, last weekend of last week, uh, was was all positive. They and it wasn't like you know wordsmithing positive. Like they Nintendo has 
definitely built themselves up to the point to where they can basically do whatever they want. Um, here are some of their individual game sales for quarter four alone. Okay. Quarter four alone. Breath of the Wild, which is a 2017 game. 1.8 million sales. More than what some AAA games get new. Uh, Smash, 2018 game. 1.97, basically 2 million sales in quarter four. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 2014 for the original version. 2017 with well, a monicum of changes, so basically a port uh, to the Switch that happened in 2017. 4 million units. 4 million just in quarter four. It's massive. Old ass games. Just absolutely. The list goes on and on, on and on. There's so many. Why? Because people, people slept on the Switch and then they, they all of a sudden got a Switch. They started buying games and this is what happened. Um, Nintendo just prints money. Yeah. There's more. There's more. Uh, so uh, let me see. Let's start with, uh, start at the bottom. Luigi's Mansion 3 uh, made, sold more in quarter four than Luigi's Mansion 2 in their lifetime. And it was 5 million that they had sold, units that they had sold in, uh, uh, in one quarter. Um, uh, see, so this is, uh, wait, I think this is lifetime sales. Yeah, life, so now we're on lifetime sales here. Uh, Mario Party, which was fairly new. Is at 9 million units total. Uh, Mario Odyssey, I'm oh, sorry, Bre Breath of the Wild is at 16 million total sales. Uh, and so, even looking at that, so, you know, Breath of the Wild has been out for like two and a half, three years. I think it was like March or something like that, 2017. Um, so, yeah, actually, like three years makes, you know, earn, got an additional 2 million off uh, uh, on top of their 16 million or added to their 16 million. Um, in just the last quarter. It's fucking crazy. Uh, Mario Odyssey at 17 million. Mario Kart 8. Anybody got any guesses? Mario Kart 8. It's the number one selling game. I think. I'm fairly certain based off these numbers here. Uh, number one selling game. That was originally on, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the Wii U. Just want to remind you. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. How many, how many sales? How many sales? How many sales do you think? Units. Units. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Golf story. Nintendo is like a Disney of video games. Just keeps selling their old shit like crazy. People keep buying it. <laughs> People like it. 26. I see 26. You're close. Total. Total. Total units. 25. Well, getting warmer. 7. We're going up. <laughs> 31. Nope. Nope. Too high. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. 23 million. Just 7. Just 7. <laughs> no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> not, not million. Just, just, just 7. Just 7. <laughs> I've heard this before. Um... So, yeah, they're at 23 million. Mario Kart 8, 23 million units moved. Just, just outstanding. Just outstanding. Um, God, I don't even know what to say, man. Like, you know, Nintendo's got, like, their, their whole theme park thing. They got movies. Uh, you know, they're really starting to ramp up with, you know, all this crazy money they're getting in for, for the Switch. Um, I didn't actually pull the Switch hardware sales but what i read was that they're at 50 million hardware sales which i don't oh man i read that and i don't believe it so don't take that don't take that as gospel um i don't have i don't have the numbers here. i should have pulled that up but i read that i read that it was like 50 million units which if you look at uh if you look at the number of games that are being sold it seems really high i would say it's probably closer to like maybe 20 something million maybe but even then, I mean, if there's 23 million in Mario Kart 8 alone, yeah, maybe 50 million definitely makes sense, actually. Um, they just surpassed, yes, right, they did. They just surpassed uh, SNES numbers. And S Super Nintendo was like the, the biggest, that was the absolute biggest platform they had for the longest time. Uh, you know, the N64 couldn't touch it. The, uh, the GameCube couldn't touch it. Um, the Virtual Boy couldn't touch it somehow uh the wii the wii got close i want to say the wii got close because the wii was massive and they could they couldn't keep up with demand for the longest time so who knows what the wii could have done um yeah it's it's the switch is definitely like the system right now uh hardware sales just went up with the recent new animal crossing edition oh that's right the animal crossing edition yeah i let me pull it up real quick for those of you guys who uh, play animal crossing 
you know, all of us is hanging out together. I'll go to Switch. Let me see. I'll show you guys the new uh, Switch console specifically for the... Here, there's a little video, but you can't really... Well, I'll pause it. Do, 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 do. Probably play this song. It's like a whole thing. The whole, the whole damn thing is branded. Look at this. Look at it. Look at this. <laughs> so now they're going to make another like 20 million in unit sales because of that. Uh, I got so excited to pre-order mine as soon as I saw the announcement for, uh, <laughs> for, for Animal Crossing. Well, I wish I would have waited on the Switch Lite actually because, um, or on getting a Switch because Declan likes Animal Crossing. He would have loved that. Um, doesn't even come with the game. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. You're lying, right? Hold on, hold on. Ah, right there. Animal Crossing plus download code. New Horizons. Okay, no, we're oh not in the U.S. but does in the U.K. <gasps> wait, wait, it says download code. So it includes Animal Crossing download code. Oh, Nintendo U.K. <laughs> <laughs> right there, Nintendo UK. Well, then hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Uh, Animal Crossing uh, Switch announcement. Hold on. Oh, let's let's find the let's find the. Here we go. Uh, Animal Crossing coming to Switch. No, no. Animal Crossing Switch edition. Let's see. Switch uh, uh, special uh, uh, special edition. Animal Crossing. Oh God, where's where's the official? It's probably on the damn Nintendo channel. Let me go here and see. I, now I gotta see if there's an actual difference in the actual, uh, Sam Cross. Oh, so it's four weeks ago, Desert Island. Do they not have the same video? Hmm, does not look like it. Let me see, that's uploads. That's all videos. Let me see. I really want to see if this is the thing. Oh, wow. Uh, I see. Six hours ago, five hours ago, uh, one day ago. God, they put out a lot of videos. Holy shit. <laughs> Good for them. I, where, where is this? Let me see. Uh, uh, animal. What? 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 There it is. Uh, four weeks ago, thirty-one seconds. Is this it? No, this is this is the game. Okay, well, I guess we'll wait and see if there's a video. Yeah, there's no video for the U.S. version yet. I really wanted to see inside by side that if I could. How funny! Uh, this is it comes out on March thirteenth in the U.S. There you go. Necro's all over it. So I... <laughs> oh man! All right, so. I believe that's it. I believe... Well, there's one more thing. There's actually... There's like two more things. There's one more thing. So the next thing I have is... Uh, I was going to just kick this thing to the curb, but it's worth mentioning. Um, now, not everybody's had the same experience with Google Stadia. Um, Blem, for example, uh, one of the community member, uh, he said he's had some pretty good experience like actually playing the game. I've heard that they've actually um, uh, kind of evened things out a little bit, and so the games are relatively playable. I haven't played it myself still. I have a damn code that Blem gave me. I still haven't done it. I apologize for it. Um, oh, Mercury, you got a link? Let me see. Let me see. It says game not included in the box. So there you go. So yeah, here it is. Uh, that's game not included right there. Game not included. So yep. How funny. I wonder what the deal with that is. I wonder the price difference. I don't know. Hmm. 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 So, uh, Google, Google Stadia went 40 days without any kind of like new games announcements, communication or anything like that with the community and the community noticed. And, uh, it's the same as the standard in Canada. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, and so there was a thread that showed up about four days ago. It says Stadia has officially gone 40 days without a new game announcement slash release feature update or real community update. It has been out for 69 days. It's time that we demand better. Uh, then it says, now that everyone's renewal is approaching, I think it's time that we outline issues. And so, so where do we stand? As expected, there haven't been any further updates in January after the 120 game mystery bonanza other than February pro game. Still supposedly two plus months out until 4K on browser. Any assistance? So basically, there's a list of things that they have not yet mentioned. Um, countdown to, st <laughs> to Stadia cancellation notice. No, Google is really good at just letting things run until they just die completely. And then by the time people, by the time they come around to killing it, people are like, wow, that was still a thing? <laughs> That's pretty much their uh, their style, um, and so and so this thread came out and it, it got a lot of uh, it got a lot of traction, and so there was a response from 
uh, from Stadia or from somebody at Google Stadia. And I believe it was actually a comment in the, in the thread by Grace from Google or something. Uh, and the comment was, and it says right at the top, it says, Google responds to Stadia complaints and says, it's up to the publishers to announce the games. Uh, let me see. Announce the games. Let me see. Announce games. Let me see if I can find that. Okay. Well, let's see. Up to publisher. Up to the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but fun to find the actual thing, actual thing here. So here you go. I want to read the whole quote. It says, we understand the desire to hear more specifics on the games. After all, that is what it is about. The games. It says, of course, not all 120 titles will be announced by the Stadia team as we leave it up to the publishers to make the announcement about the IP, their IP slash games uh, and which platforms it will appear on, just as we will do with the exclusive content coming to Stadia, the rep said. This seems like just like the wrong thing to do uh, as a platform that's trying to get trying to get off its feet and trying to get traction uh i mean shit even egs was doing everything they could to uh you know well first they were buying up everything but they were advertising it like you were hearing about it they were talking about it they were they were there was videos on it there was entire entire uh, uh award shows sponsored by egs where they talked about it and here is google saying well no it's up to the publishers to to announce that they're going to be out that the game's going to be out on our platform they're not, they're not in a position to do this. This is not, this is not a position of power that Google has in this industry. Um, they are the ones that need to do what Epic, I really hate to say this, but it's true. Like they're the ones that need to do what Epic has done. Um, not necessarily buying up games, but getting the name out there somehow, like getting out there, buying time, like I said, award shows. I mean, they had the entire the game awards. It's basically epic game awards. Um, it wasn't necessarily not in a, con, like, uh, uh, in a cynical way, it, but it was. It was the epic uh, game stores thing. Um, uh, Google should have said they will work with publishers, just slap and publishers in the face. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's their fault they would not all publish for our garbage platform. Yeah, yeah. I'm, as, as, a, as a developer, outside of just putting a sticker on the bottom... Like they do is there's like, you know, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, fucking whatever. And then at the very end, it's Google Stadia. Outside of that, they're not going to come out and say, now on Google Stadia. No, because nobody, nobody is, is, that's right. Not a lot of people are using uh, Google Stadia. They're still going to get the games, but it's not going to, it's not good for the platform if they're, if they're not getting any new people. The people that have the service, like Blem, they're enjoying the service, right? So if there's not anything, this is my sample size of one here, so bear with me. But if they're, if they're not getting, if, if, they're, if their platform is doing well, they're still not going to gain uh, users just off of that. Oh, hey, does Stadia work? Oh, great. Good for you. They're not going to get anybody new. Uh, I find it kind of funny that there are already games that are being removed from Stadia. All games added should have been guaranteed at least uh, at least a year. Oh man, already. It's been a training since before launch. Yeah. Uh, no way. How much did you get paid? Top? What top say? Being a small dev for the small game, no one hears about Epic Treats You Right. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, maybe they treat the individual dev right. But they don't set them up for for, uh, for success in the future. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's Google Stadia is not looking too hot in terms of just communication in general. Uh, I I I wish that they would do more. And this is something that we should honestly remember in the future because if Google Stadia goes the way of on live. We say that on live, well, you know what? On live was just before its time. That's like the general things before its time. But if you were there, then you remember that initially you would have to buy games, but you wouldn't own them. So you'd pay full price for a game that wasn't on your system that ran on lower settings. At the time, it was, you know, the uh, if you play Unreal Tournament 2000 or Unreal Tournament 3, uh, it looked like shit because of their shared server system or whatever to, to, to actually stream the game to you. They couldn't run it at very high uh, settings. Um, but then they decided to say, okay, we'll do renting. It was like two ninety nine for like a weekend or something, and then seven eight dollars or whatever, ten dollars for a week, and then something for a month. Uh, and they tried all these things, but nothing was sticking, right? And so they kept changing up their platform. Nobody could really follow how the renting thing exactly. The renting was weird. Nobody could really follow how the renting thing worked. Uh, and ultimately, they ended up being their demise. On top of the fact that they were before their time, but it wasn't exclusively because it was before their time. Now, when Google Stadia, you know. 
I mean, at this rate, inevitably goes over or it goes under. We have to remember that they did shit like this. Whatever happens in the future, where we're like, oh, maybe Google Stadia is before its time. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> they just didn't want to talk about Stadia. Google didn't want to talk about Stadia. That's why they failed. Uh, I miss renting games from Blockbuster. So do I. I miss going in there and just thinking, hmm, which game am I going to play this weekend? And can I beat it before? Whatever. I got I rented a Fable that way, actually. Fable uh, 1 and 2. Loved it. Loved it. Um, I will tell you that uh, that is the end of the show. But I do have a couple of things. I have a big story on Riot that I am still piecing together. I wanted to have it together for today. But, um, but there's, I mean, this is a lot and it's an ongoing thing. It has to do with their gender, dis gender discrimination lawsuit. Um, it seems like there is just a lot of just shenanigans going on between, uh, between them and the government actually. So we'll get more in depth with that, uh, in the future. Um, and lastly, watch out for the coronavirus. <laughs> I have a website here. I'll go and drop the link in uh, in chat for you guys. Uh, this was actually linked in uh, in Shitty Earth, very um, rightfully so. Uh, it's actually kind of a cool cool site, very reminiscent of Plague Inc. Um, it shows the breakout areas. It shows the total deaths, uh, the infected. It shows the timeline of cases. And the reason why we're talking about this on a video game news show is because. Uh, because Overwatch, the Overwatch team canceled games in China because of this. So that's why we're talking about it. So here it is. This is uh, <laughs> this is the chart that you need to follow um, to keep track of where uh, where this thing's coming from. And you can actually see if you zoom out here, you can see that there are you know areas all over the place where things have been uh, reported. Uh, there have been, as far as I know, no deaths in the States. Got it. I haven't really gone through it and looked, but, um, uh, yeah, it has gone, it has, it had the, the deaths have actually gone up since this morning. So yeah, <laughs> Google, Google Inc is our play Inc is like, stop using our game to sip. They did actually say that they did actually say that. Uh, a case about three hours away, a uh, plague Inc developer. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, no, they did. They said uh, it is just a game amid con coronavirus outbreak. Uh, starts buying out the grocery store. Just just buy a bunch of water and just stay indoors. That's all you got to do. I'm going to Costco, I think, maybe this weekend. So that's basically a rip for me. <laughs> um, cool. Only five cases in the U.S. so far. I expect it to be a lot more by the end of the weekend, though, actually. Probably double that. Super Bowl coronavirus weekend. Oh, all those people traveling. Mm. Oh, baby. It's going to be rough. Uh, you know, I don't even know sound coronavirus. I guess we'll just, uh, we'll just see. Except this. I will say this. Your corona beer jokes are old as fuck. Stop it. They're not funny anymore. You're done. Okay? No more. Cut the shit out. It's not being funny on the same... You, Top! Talking to you, Top! <laughs> Corona beer sales are down, though. <laughs> Only Modelo virus jokes now. All right, that's it for the news. That was a big one, guys. Thank you so much, chat. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for hanging out here this entire show and helping me out and everything. And, uh, and yeah, you guys are great. Um... My name is Mike B.A.K. Phony. This is the news. We're going to try to do this every week as long as we have news. I feel like after this week, we're probably going to have a nice steady stream going into February. Everyone's off vacation. Everyone's recovered from the holidays. Uh, going forward, I guess we'll just cover coronavirus until uh, more news comes in. So thank you so much for hanging out. And I'll see you guys. <laughs>